Well, welcome one, welcome all. We thank you uh, tonight for allowing us this time to be with you. We're going to open in prayer, and as the Lord says the same, we'll have a brief uh, conversation about our 132 days, which has tremendously been blessing me, and I pray that uh, in like manner it has been blessing you. Father, we come uh, tonight to give your name glory, honor, and praise. You are worthy. You deserve our highest praise, our highest hallelujahs. It all belongs to you because of, sim simply because of who you are. We thank you that you are God that we can depend upon. We pray now that you will bless our gathering tonight. Open hearts, open minds that we'll gain insight in what, what your word would say. We'll draw closer to you, closer to your word, closer to one another. Pray that you will use us as viable witnesses, be able to share your gospel and spread the good news of a savior that still lives. We ask you now to forgive us of all of our many sins. Thank you for being a God of grace and mercy. Continue to shower your love upon us and use us as you see fit. Father, we thank you. We've gone through a whole lot this last week, but we thank you because you never left us. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Welcome, one and all. Welcome, you that are on Zoom. Welcome to you that are on Facebook as, as well as conference call. Truly, we give God all the glory, honor, and the praise, and we uh, have to first thank you for sharing this Friday night with us. We know what we used to do in the 70s yeah, on a Friday night. And so uh, we really appreciate you sharing this special time with us. We ask you to invite your family, have a watch party, invite your friends, press the like button, the subscribe button, and just become a part of this ministry. We salute all of the uh, black folk for Black History Month. We, we certainly uh, deserve to be celebrated. Thank God for all of the ones that's gone on before us. And, you know, we, we're standing on their shoulders. Uh, and for that, we thank God uh, for all that has transpired in our past. And I know they want to bring us back to where we used to be, but we're going to progress on by commemorating and memor by, by bringing up what we used to do and what we used to be in an effort that we'll continue to advance on. With that stated, uh, on Sundays, uh, we'll be having some readings throughout the month. We're not going to try to have our black history program as usual. Uh, we know that Sister Duffel has always done tremendous job, an awesome job in presenting to us the facts about many of our people uh, that brought uh, great inventions to light uh, within their lifetime. This is in the early 20s, 30s, and 40s. And, you know, uh, thank God for all, all that Sister Duffel has, has brought, to my, even to my recollection. Thank God for her, for keeping that in the forefront of our minds. This Sunday, is our youth Sunday. We're going to ask all of our uh, children to be ready to be on devotion. And our youth, Anthony Medina, I'm looking for you to be here. I'm calling you out right online. Amen. Here on the uh, devotional team um, on this Sunday. We are uh, praying for the family of, of uh, Pastor Bruce Redbirds. He passed today. Um, and certainly we want to keep him, his church, his family, and his church family in our prayers during this troubling time. Um, the announcement tomorrow at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m., I will be preaching at the New Hope Baptist Church. We'll be online by Facebook, conference call. We will have everything together, I believe, on, I know on Facebook. And so Facebook will be ready, and we'll be ready to have a good time 
uh, at 3 p.m. for celebrating his 20th year of pastoral appreciation. And certainly I, I, I recognize and honor that brother, good brother, one who stands with me, one who walks with me, and one who holds, holds me up many times. And, and we work in tandem for the uh, association, but certainly in our uh, respect, respective uh, ministries. We thank God for him and applaud and appreciate all that he has been to us and especially to the New Hope Church family for these last 20 years. All right, tonight, tonight, tonight we are on our 132 days of a prayer and consecration and I pray that, that you uh, not just look at the text but that you read the text and that you read, well, the idea is to read the scriptures, read the text, and then uh, consecrate on it, concentrate, consecrate yourselves. Let it be a part of your devotion. Let it be a part of your, your development, your spiritual development. It's my idea that these 132 days will, 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 will embark, up us on, uh, embark each of us on a closer walk with God spiritually. That, that's the idea behind it. It will allow us to begin to invest daily time, time daily invested in reading and studying the word. We are, on, we are moving through Haggai through St. John. So we're shifting from the Old Testament, moving into the New Testament four Gospels. So Haggai in through the book of John. Uh, this day, day, day 37, Haggai, we, 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 we pin this one, or title this one, A Chosen Vessel for the Lord. We entitled this one, A Chosen Vessel for the Lord. Haggai 2 and 23, in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shelitiel, saith the Lord, and will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. Yeah, you and I have been chosen to be vessels to be used in God's service. In that day, in that day, those days were days of trouble. They, Zerubbabel was going through days of war. They were going through days of destruction. And, 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 and it didn't look like there were going to be any end coming up. But God say, in the midst of all of that trouble, in the midst of all of that struggle, in the midst of all of that burden, in the midst of that heavy load, some of us been through hell and high water all week long. I wish I could get a witness right here. Just put a light up. So you, I, we, we, we've gone through some terrible times on just this week. But, but, but thank God we can shout about, I know I'm a chosen vessel. I, whatever I'm going through, I'm a chosen. I got to remember, God chose me. Now, why did he choose me? The thing is this. The, the choosing is recognized in identifying that one word, signet. That, that, that's, the, that's the thing that we, we're losing. And what a, what a signet, what it symbolized. A signet symbolized that this is the property of the king. It, it suggests that the, if the king put his ring on it, if the king put a signet on a wagon, it symbolized, don't touch this, this belongs to the king. Don't bother this, it belongs to the king. If you damage this, the king will damage you. And so it gave a special significance, and God says, I will make thee as a signet. You, in the midst of all this trouble, in the midst, well, watch this, I'm not going to move the struggle. But I'm going to make you be an instrument. You, you going to symbolize what it is to be special in the midst of all of this struggle. 
It, it symbolizes you are going to represent the king of kings in the midst of war and desolation. Whatever's going on around us in this crisis, whatever's going on in our work, whatever's going on in our health, whatever's going on, we still symbolize God. So we got to hold our head up. We got to hold our spirit up, realize he didn't bring me this far to leave me. Now, I don't need to be making excuses. God ain't going to put no more on me than I can bear. I am his witness. I'm, 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 I'm so thankful I, I, that I can say God chose us. Ministers, Sister Deborah Williams, Sister Angela Huntley, Brother Ed Whitlock, Mother Armetta Hamilton, Sister Mary Johnson, Sister Shirley Seward, Sister Monica Dunham said, Amen. Amen for being a servant and a vessel of the Most High God. Hallelujah to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving me first. <laughs> Ain't that good news? Verse number 38. I entitled this one, The Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, day 38, the Holy Spirit, power for the believer's progress. Day 38, the Holy Spirit, power for believer's progress. That's Zechariah 4 and 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. That, not, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. <clears throat> Good God Almighty, whatever, <coughs> whatever we do, Whatever we accomplish, it's not by our power. It's not by our wisdom. But it's by God's spirit. Isn't that wonderful? Because my power and your power will diminish. There was a time, <clears throat> excuse me, I used to can, can jump and play basketball now by, I barely can roll out the bed. It diminished. There was a time I could bench press a lot of weight. Now I can barely carry my own shoulders up above my head. It's tough. Now, 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 no matter what we do, we get just a little weak over time. So thank God that God's power never diminishes. Isn't it wonderful to know that you are totally kept by the Spirit of God? It's not these masks we're wearing, but wear your mask. No, 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 no. It's not the gloves we put on, but keep your gloves on. But it's by God's Spirit that we are being kept. So my, 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 my my, my encouragement to you today is let God do his work and tell him, Lord, I thank you. Every night, tell him, thank you for keeping me all day. Every morning you wake up, keep, thank you, Lord, for keeping me all night long. All through the day, Lord, I thank you for watching over me. Not by might. We are being kept by God's Holy Spirit. Our ministers, sister, Angela Huntley, Sister Monica Dunham, Sister Deborah Williams, Deacon Kevin Dreyer, Mother Armetta Hamilton, Brother Ed Whitlock said, Amen. Let go and let God. Let God work it all out. Day 39. <clears throat> oh my goodness. I didn't sing tonight because I want to spend a little time on this one. Day 39. Pay him the Lord. His tithe will bless your life. 
paying the Lord his tithe will bless your life. I ought to have some witnesses right there, some hands up. And I, I thank you, thank you. I see the hands up. I, Malachi 3, 8 and 10. Will a man rob God? Yeah. Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? The Lord responds, in tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye've robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Paying the Lord his tithe, I'm telling you, will bless your life. Israel, the people of God, all the good things that God had done for them were found guilty of refusing to pay the Lord his tithe. The tithe is holy. Malachi, the prophet, charges them with sacrilegious theft. Thievery. See, a robber is somebody who steals from somebody else. Right up in his face. See, a thief will clip you while he's not there. But a robber going to get you right in your face. He just walk right up to you and give it up. That's what Israel was doing to God. They, Look, I'm not doing right in God's face. See, many have tried to nullify God's tithe by the Old Testament. They say that we give now because of grace given. You know, we give because of the love. You know, you just, as, as you, no, no, no. 1 Corinthians 15 says, upon the first day of the week, lay up in store as God has prospered. There's a percentage that God ain't gonna go lower than. Now that's offering, that's tithes and offering. The tithe is a tenth. Tithe is not a little here and there. A tithe is as soon as you get it, you give that 10% of that. Which, which really says, Lord, all of it's yours. I'm just giving you 10% to show you I appreciate it. Amen. That's all what the tithe is. The offering is above 10%. How right. I many of you want to believe that the tithe is Old Testament and we live off of grace given because it was Tithe was the law. No, tithe preceded the law. Tithe was given to Melchizedek before Moses gave the law. So before the law, tithe was already in operation. Are y'all with me? And then to tithe in the New Testament, Jesus spoke up about it in Matthew 23, 23 and 23. When Jesus said, listen, listen. You paying tithe of mint common and all of this. See, that you ought not, that, but you, 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 you neglecting to be right. You neglecting justice and love. He said, listen, you ought to do that and don't neglect that. In other words, don't pay the tithe and hate people, but pay the tithe and love people. In other words, don't neglect the tithe. That's in the New Testament. So don't say that is something that's been done away with. No, 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 no. The, the, the tithe is 10%. The Lord reserved the tithe to himself and for his service at service. And when we refuse to pay the tithe, what the Lord says belongs to him, we are actually robbing him. Amen. But God will get his tithes from his children. Haggai, Haggai, that first chapter, verse number uh, three through nine. Well, let's pick up at verse number six. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, 
but you are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Verse 9. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I blew upon it. Why, saith the Lord? Because of mine house that's laid waste, and you run away to every man his own house. In other words, you think you're going to do well by refraining your, yourself from giving the tithe. If you keep the tithe, you can do well. No, God say, I'm going to cut a hole in your money bag. You wonder why trouble always in your house and house, car tear down, house falling apart because you ain't paid God his tithe. God going to get his. We should hear that statement say, Reverend, that excuse, Reverend, I can't afford right now. I got too many bills. No, the statement ain't I can't afford to tithe. The statement is you can't afford not to tithe. God going to get his. May as well give it up. And stop stealing from God, wearing stolen clothes, and driving stolen cars. Amen. We ought to be able to pay God his. You pay tithe. You don't pay the Lord tithe. It's his tithe. Ministers. Sister Monica Dunham, Sister Angela Huntley, Sister Deborah Williams, Sister Shirley Seward, Sister April Dunham, Sister Ruby Copeland, Mother Armetta Hamilton, Sister Mary Johnson. Amen. I learned that the hard way. Give God what we owe him. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Day 40. Day 40. Charged to change our surroundings. This is the New Testament. Charged to change our surroundings. Matthew 5, 13 and 14. Very memorable scriptures. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Change, charge to change our surroundings. As salt preserves and light gives illumination, so shall the saints cause a change in their surrounding. People ought to see Jesus or hear about Jesus or feel the presence of Jesus every time you in their, in their atmosphere. Salt makes food pleasant and appetizing and preserves from corruption. So Christians, by our lives and by our instructions, by how we live, by how we tell people how, how God's been good to us, we are to keep this entire world from moral corruption. We, 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 we bring down uh, the blessings of God by our prayers and we lift up a, a, a people's favor with God by our being in their presence, by our influence of them, by how we act and interact and how we react when things come up against us. All Christians, every Christian, every Christian is a light. Now, 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 the idea is, is your light shining? Is you, uh, you already connected, but sometimes we get disconnected. We cut off the flow by our sinful behavior. So we've got to let our light shine because that's our duty. That's not our, uh, you know, when we, when we feel like it, I won't know you. You're obligated. We're obligated. Somebody going to go to hell talking to you and I, and we don't care nothing about it. Somebody going to miss heaven, all because we've been chosen to light up their lives, and we neglect them because we feel they're unworthy. Let me just say, pass the salt, brothers and sisters. Ain't nothing like salt. Salt make it taste good, don't it? Man, you put a little salt on the grits and eggs. 
People like putting sugar. They don't. They that country. Say I'm country people. Country us country folk. I'm from South Stockton, California. We know to put a little little salt on it. Salt make it taste so good. Amen. So, but then we ought to shine. Light it up. Wherever we are, light it up. Wherever your presence is, you're supposed to be the light. It, don't, it doesn't matter. It don't matter how bad you've been. It doesn't matter where, what you used to. You're supposed to be the light. Stop making excuses. Stop saying, I've been trying. I'm, I'm sick of them. No, don't do that. God didn't get sick of you. You, you need to light it up. Let them see the love of Jesus. You know what? Let them see the joy that's in you on Sunday morning. That joy that just you, you can't contain yourself. You jump up and shout, thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Let that be in you everywhere you go. Light it up. Ministers. Brother Antonio Dominique Shepherd. That's my, that's my brother in uh, Lawrence, Kansas. That's, I, I, that's, 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 that's what Dominique is his name. Antonio I call him Antoine. That's what my French name. Antonio Shepard, my brother. Sister Angela Huntley, Sister Monica Dunham, Sister Deborah Williams, brother Edward Whitlock, all the way in Topeka, Kansas. Amen. Amen. Brother Rudy Shepard, right on. Light. Let the light shine forth. Let the light shine forth. Amen. Right on. Day 41. Touched by Jesus. He laid his hands. <laughs> he laid his hands on me. He, he laid his hands on you. He, he, we, he, he, he touched. Hamilton got both hands up in the back. He laid his hands upon us because we were lepers. Mark 1 verses 40 through 41. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. <laughs> this is a wonderful story about a brother who was not supposed to even get close to people. And his conscience kept telling him the closer he get, they can stone him. The closer he get, they can kill him. The closer he get, he's breaking the law. The closer he gets, he needs to be hollering unclean, unclean. But he can't help it. Jesus is in his vicinity. And the closer he gets, the, the more he realizes, I just might get some help here. And oh my God, he kept getting closer and closer. And he hollered out, Master, Lord, if thy will. And there's a twist on these. There's a change on these wills. He says, if thou willst. Jesus says, I will. Two different Greek words. The one Greek word, the first Greek word that he says, if thou will, he's saying, look upon me and don't judge me. Don't think about it because if you think about it, you will understand I'm not worthy because I'm dirty. I'm filthy. Just if you will, just put it on me, Lord. And Jesus says, I've already thought about it. I've already thought about it. I've already considered it. I'm going to do it anyway. But that says to you and I, we were unworthy. We were unfit, undeserving. And the man laid his hands upon us. He touched. He touched. Ain't that good news? I'm so glad he didn't consider what we were. He didn't consider how bad we were. Thank you, Lord, for touching. Woo! Can you imagine what we would be without that touch? One touch from him, and our eyes opened. One touch from him, our hearts became hearts of flesh and shifted from hearts of stone. Oh, I thank God for that touch from Jesus. Our ministers, Brother Leroy Hamilton, 
Sister Armetta, Sister Angela Huntley, Sister Delana Foster, Mother Armetta Hamilton, Sister Sandra Lackey said, Amen. One touch from Jesus and you'll never be the same. Hallelujah for that one touch. Wholeheartedly, I can say I've been touched by the hand of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. As well as Sister Deborah Williams and Sister Virginia Galisti. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you all. When y'all re, re, when y'all shoot that back out to me, I put it back on here because them are great thoughts. And they're great encouragements for others that are on the line that they can see some things. Amen. Amen. Day 42. <clears throat> Your name. Whew, I almost jumped up and took off running. Your name is written in heaven. <laughs> God to mighty. It's written on the heavenly road. Yes, sir. It's written on the heavenly road. Now, now, uh, let me say this. I have spell checkers, uh, but my spell checkers didn't check my spelling this time. They missed heavenly roll. It's not R-O-L-E, but it's R-O-L-L. -L. I, I checked my, my spell checkers that time, didn't I? I <laughs> Your name is written in the he on, on the heavenly roll. Luke 10 and 20. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Y'all remember this story? The disciples were sent out two by two and they went out, they healed the sick. They went out and they raised the dead. They went out, they, you know, they, they performed miracles, they won people to Christ Jesus, and, 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 and they came back bragging about, oh Lord, you should have seen us work. Can't you hear Peter? Man, you should have seen me. I can hear old Thomas. You ain't seen, you ain't said nothing. You should have seen me and you. We, we was over here doing this. Yeah, but me and Bartholomew was handling over here. They was talking about that, and Jesus interrupts them. Jesus interrupts the ministry that he sent them out to do and says, I don't need y'all shouting about what you can do. What your real shout need to be on is that your name yes, is written in heaven. Now, that, that ought to make anybody give God glory and honor right there. That your names have been etched in the halls of heaven for all eternity. No, watch this. No matter what anybody does, no matter what you do, no matter what the devil does, your name will not be erased. It cannot be expunged. Jesus says, if I got you in my hands, can't nobody pluck you out. You can't walk out and the devil can't come in there to get you out. Do I have a witness here? I wish I had some likes up. I wish I had some people who understand. Your name is written. I know you waiting for that vaccine sign, waiting for that vaccine shot. Your name is written. You got to go sit in the hours and waiting all that long. I know. I'm waiting on my, them to put my name on the roll. They just come down to the 65 years. I'm getting my name on that roll. I'm getting that shot. As soon as they let me get that shot. But that ain't nothing like my name written in the heavenly robe because I still can get the shot and still catch the COVID. I wish I had a witness here. But the shot helps me deal with the, with the symptoms. It, that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. But oh, because my name is written in heaven, I can deal with the symptoms that suffering, we're going through all the suffering down here. I can deal with the symptoms of the pains in our body. I can deal with the symptoms of being hated by our enemy. I can deal with the symptoms because my name, your name, our name is written in heaven. I don't care who don't like you. You ought to shout because your name 
is written on the heavenly roll. Hallelujah. When that roll is called and he signed my name and he holler out Dunham. If he holler out Anthony. I may not know. I may not recognize if he holler out those names. The only name I know that he gonna holler out is servant. And when he say hey, servant, I won't know he gonna, I know he gonna be talking about me because I'm gonna serve him the balance. Do I have a witness here? Are you a servant of the most high God? Then you will serve him the balance of your days all because <laughs> your name is written in heaven. God bless you and may God keep you my brothers and my sisters. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you, the ministers Sister Monica Dunham, Sister Mary Johnson, Brother Ed Whitlock Oh I still got day 43. Ed Whitlock, Sister Angela Hutley Sister Delana Foster Mother Armetta Hamilton, Brother uh, Ronald Scott Ronnie Scott Deacon Rudy Somerville, Sister Carolyn Miles, Sister Valen uh, Virginia Galisti says, Amen for meditating and giving thanks for my name yep. being on the heavenly road. Yep. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm running for my life because my name is written <laughs> on the heavenly road. Yep. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. Day 43. The gift. That keeps on giving. Yes, the gift. That keeps on giving. I, I put Friday on the end there. Not because. I made a mistake. I put Friday there. Because today is Friday. And the list is getting so long. That I think. You notice. I, one time I put. I sent out two days. In the same time. Because I got so much, so many going on. So that helped me keep them in order. Y'all forget the preacher. I have to keep it in order so I can send one a day. <laughs> Amen. Day 43, the gift that keeps on giving. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. See the purpose is that whosoever. Believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. <laughs> Whoa! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ. Uh, that's the gift. That's the ultimate gift. That, that, that's the, that, that the, listen, if anybody don't give you a gift, my, my birthday coming up in a few more days. If you don't give me nothing, that's okay. I got a gift. That keeps, if you don't get a Christmas gift, that's okay. You got a gift that keeps on. I, I, I never will uh, quite understand how we have these uh, huge birthday parties. I never had none for my kids. We didn't have none. I, ain't, I don't go to none for my grandkids, nothing like that. We don't have none. Waste of money. Anyway, uh, didn't have, but you give a kid a great big gift. Expensive gift, they go play with the box more than they do with the gift. Because it don't, don't mean nothing. They don't, they, they don't even understand what it is. They, 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 you give them a gift, they, you, they, you see it pushed away in a corner somewhere. Because it don't keep on being exciting, exciting. It doesn't keep their interest. It doesn't keep their minds uh, uh, motivated. But oh, there's a gift in Christ Jesus. Oh, when you get the gift of God. When you, God, when you accept God, give God made the gift available, but you got to go and receive the gift. And when you re receive that gift, that gift will keep on giving. I'm here to tell you, you can be down as you can be. You can be heavily. I, I've gone through hell this week. I've had a bur burdens this week. But God kept on lifting me. God kept on encouraging me. God kept on bringing me to the reality that if it was not for him, I never would have made it. But oh, he keep reminding and refreshing me. He didn't bring me this far to leave me now. 
So be encouraged. So I find myself being like David. I encourage myself in the Lord, which means that's the gift. Because I've been saved, you've been saved, you have that gift that you can call on. When your head is heavy, when your heart is hurt, when your mind is messed up, when you feel like throwing up both your hands and just throwing up, call it at all quits. Oh, the pandemic have put a hurt on a whole lot of people. This pandemic have put a strain and a struggle on the church, this, 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 on relationship, on, you, you know, you can't hug people. You can't, you know, you want to hug little babies and put them on your shoulder and pat them, give them, Burp them and you can't touch even babies if they ain't yawn. Amen. Thank God for, for little things you can do that were, were, were normal. You, you can't even embrace brothers and sisters. It's difficult because our human propensity is to have close relationship by physical touch. But all oh, the goodness of God is. He'll keep lifting you. He'll keep strengthening you. He'll keep encouraging you. Let you know everything going to be all right. Thank God for that free grace. That's what it is. Grace. That free gift. Because it's that one gift that keeps on giving. Isn't that wonderful? Thank God. The minister's. Our grandson, Ray Ray, we in Oklahoma in the military. Sister Monica Dunham, Sister April Dunham, Brother Ed Whitlock, Sister Angela Huntley, Mother Armetta Hamilton, Brother Ronnie Scott, Sister Virginia Galisti, Sister Deborah William, Sister Shirley Seward. They all hollered, amen. Thank God for the gift, amen, for the gift of Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the perfect gift, which I needed most. Yes, it keeps. Yeah, it's a yes, it does keep on giving. Ain't that all right? <laughs> well, God bless you. May God bless you real good. Thank you tonight for this moment in time. We pray that you were blessed and that you were encouraged. We pray that, pray that you were even uh, convicted tonight. And that you will become a tither, that you will become a salt and light, and that you will remember and remind yourself that I've got a gift that can bring me through this struggle that I'm going through, this dry period, this moment when I'm struggling even to exist. Realize you got a gift from God, and that gift, if you allow him, he'll keep on lifting you. And it'll keep on blessing you. God bless you. We're going to have a prayer. And then we're going to close up. Father, we thank you tonight. For your great, for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. Thank you for challenging us. Thank you for assuring us that heaven is ours. Our name is signed on the heavenly robe. We pray now, Master, that you would continue to bless the church. Build the church. Strengthen the church. Keep us together. Bless deacons, bless their wives, bless the ministers, bless their wives, bless every individual of being a part of this church. Continue to bless my wife with health and strength. Bless her to remain by my side. We pray that you will give us strength and courage in these dangerous dark times. Keep us, Lord, and then bless all of our sick. Have mercy on God, on Sister uh, Garrett and Deacon Moore. Have mercy on Deacon Jordan and have mercy on Deacon Wilson's son-in-law and all of those that are affected by this COVID. Then bless um, uh, Pastor Bruce Rivers' family and bless his church, oh God, that they can hold on and maintain and, and, and be able to understand that in these times, uh, 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 we, we got to be able to deal with these times leaning on you. Help us to help them to realize as us to realize that you're still God and that you're still God all by yourself. And then, God, we pray that you will continue to uh, increase our faith in you and increase our walk with you. We'll give you glory and honor. I thank you for all the ones that's online and all the ones on Zoom, conference call, 
all the ones that are on uh, Facebook and even the ones that are here. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us connected. Thank you for keeping us involved. They don't have to be here, and I thank you for that. Thank you for the strength you've given me and my wife. Allow us to continue in doing what's necessary. Continue to lead and guide me. Use me in, in, the, in the name of Jesus. And we'll give you all glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We'll go with God and go in peace. We love you. May God bless you. Love you.